Alright guys, I let this uh, I let this carb soak overnight last night. It's not a full 24 hours, but it's uh, I checked the progress and it was uh, it was getting really really clean quick. It wasn't as like I said, it wasn't as dirty as some that I've cleaned. I'm kind of letting the excess carb cleaner drip off the basket. Farmall, my buddy Farmall had sent me a, a comment concerning the carb cleaner. I was going to show you real quick what kind of kind of was. This is Gunk Carb Medic. Uh, he was using a different type. This is okay. It's, it's just not a big a bigger round container would be better in my mind. But this, you know, it'll hold smaller carbs. No problem. Yeah, you can see it came pretty clean. I'll just get me hot water in this old, uh, it's an old Tupperware bowl and I finish cleaning anything off that might be loose and then I blow everything out. A wire brush. Make sure we get every, every little bit that we can get off of it. The process is pretty much straightforward, you know, the way I do it anyway. I, th I think it's straight, straightforward. Just go over the whole thing with uh, with a wire brush or parts brush or whatever. And there's a lot of little passages I want to show you. Little bitty, little tiny orifices that uh, one up here uh, that I use this. I, I had to kind of, I, I just made this thing. This is a like a, a needle for a basketball or football, whatever to blow up kind of things with. And it's just a cheapo uh, Campbell Hallsfield uh, nozzle, but it's really good for sticking in those little, those little orifices like that. So whatever you want to do with that, food for thought, um, you may consider building you one or buying one. You may be able to buy them. I don't know. I just made that one. Now I'm just going to take a shop towel, get most of the kind of what most of, most of the residue off. After I blow this thing dry, you know, clear, after I clear all my passages, you know, with my compressed air, I'm going to go back over this whole thing with brake cleaner and just spray off any residue and blow through all the all the passages. You can see, you can see here when I blow through this port, I get material out of there. Let me see if you can see that or not. Can you see the air coming out there? Not sure. Anyway, that tells me they're clear. Okay, I got most of the water off of it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go grab my uh, my brake cleaner, and we'll get this sprayed off. Okay, I've got one more passage I want to blow through. See this? Been there. I want to. I want to blow through this passage right here real quick. Okay, now I can feel air coming out. All these passages it tells me it's all clear. So we'll uh, just go ahead and give it a once over. It's going to get any residue off. This stuff here is really harsh. So, uh, be advised, I guess. Get this. Wipe it off real quick now and blow compressed air through everything again. And this will be done. And we'll start on the main body of the carburetor. Give y'all a quick shot, quick shot of how clean it cleaned it up really, really good. That's a whole lot better than what we saw when we were tearing these carburetors down. <coughs> I don't want to bore you guys too much with these processes, you know, the what 
you know what I do personally with the carburetor so really basically all you're going to be doing here is the same thing you did on the other one just go over it get it good and clean then I'll wash it out with the water make sure I spray through every every last passage there's still some you know there's a lot of places that you really you know in, in my mind it's important to, to get compressed air through every passage that's open um, to make sure you you don't want a bad build if you had a you know even in the cleaning process you can loosen up a piece of garbage and it can make its way into a, a passage and then you throw it all back together you know if you haven't cleared everything then you've got a you know what you would consider a failed build and it was really just because uh, you know it was uh, something you overlooked or whatever um, and there's nothing more discouraging to me than going through rebuilding something and just because of a oversight you got trouble so anyway I guess really to me the the, the biggest um, part of of doing carburetor work it's just patience you know being patient and uh, watching what you're doing and I haven't obviously nobody has a hundred percent success and used to my my failures in, in working on carburetors was just me not you know if I, if I took a shortcut or if I was impatient I'd have a bad a bad deal and have to do it over again so all right, guys, I want to give you kind of a close-up of uh, view of what I'm doing here because it, I guess really to illustrate the, the, the fact of what is really still on these carburetors, I don't know if you can see or not, but there's still the, the residue of uh, that's on here. Even after you wash it with water, you can, of course, that's off the bottom of the carburetor. There's a little chunk that is, but... Um, just let's get an idea of what all, what's still on the carburetor. Can you see? I don't know if I got the camera going in tight enough, but you can see a gray film that's coming off of this carburetor. It's really I'm not doing it justice with what I'm doing here. But I don't know if you're going to see that or not. But there's a gray film as I spray this. If I spray really slow, I can see a gray film wash off of it. To, to me, it's, it's just uh, very important to get every last bit of garbage off the carburetor that you can get off of it. And before I forget, there's another point I want to make with this. A lot of times, you know, a guy, say you'll uh, you go wide with it, go, go back out wide with this. Okay, a lot of guys will, do, you, and I've, it's happened to me too. You rebuild a carburetor and it still runs terrible. You know you got everything clean. You know you got it put back together right. Sometimes the bore for this throttle plate, butterfly, whatever you want to call it, this bore, the bushings will wear. And it will leak air through there. You want to be careful, you know, when you uh, uh, check it. Make sure you don't have... You know, side to side is not the deal. That it's up and down, and this is really tight, up and down. I, I don't have any. I don't have to worry about anywhere on my bushings with this carburetor here. But uh, I have built carburetors, and then be they run just as bad as it did before you built the thing, and you're frustrated. And it was before I understood what was going on. It was the it was the bushings. And let's go over all of our passages. Okay, this is uh, this is where it gets a little bit uh, uh, this is where it gets a little bit tedious trying to take get your jets clean. Uh, let me get my tools real quick. That's what I I keep on hand with yep, little pieces of I've showed this shown this before. This is what I use for these actually I, these drill bits I use for. You know, sizing jets are really super, super small. 
uh, you can see in comparison to those pieces of wire how how small they are um, I can lay those aside but these pieces of wire and stuff I use this to go through to go through the the holes in the jets to make sure everything is clear let's go through every one of them it's pretty good now I'm going to take my uh, wire brush and we'll get all the residue off of it I usually clean that until the uh, till you can see the brass shine pretty good I don't, want, I don't want to stick anything back in the carburetor that isn't supposed to be in the carburetor and residue would fall in that category I'm really kind of anxious to see how these are going to run see how they're going to do I haven't uh, like I say, I haven't tried the, the, the ICTs on a 1915. I'm kind of anxious to see how that works out for me. Good deal you know and I don't want to bore you guys with this but it, it's really the same process we're going to be all these jets all these jets in this basket I'm gonna do them one by one just like I did that one so I'm not going to bore you with with you know going through and doing each one of them but uh, like I say I've got I'm gonna cut the I'm gonna cut the video off right here and um, uh, get back in the house I'm gonna finish cleaning these of course but I gotta get back in the house and we'll uh, Let's go ahead and dunk. This is this is what we have when it, you know when it goes in the in the carb cleaner. I got to get that gasket off there, by the way. But, uh, that's the way it goes in, and you can see how it comes out. So I'm going to cut the video off here, clean, finish cleaning the jets and stuff, and I'll catch you guys on the assembly process.